Well, good morning, guys, from Namche Bazaar. After having a rest day in this incredible town, city, the last spot of civilization that we're gonna have for the rest of the trip, we uh, did a small 400 meter uh, climb just to acclimatize. Yesterday was so foggy, you couldn't even see those peaks that are right there behind me. Today, we have a five hour uh, trek. We're gonna be dropping or losing all the elevation that we gain from the river up to this point, we're gonna drop down to the river where we're gonna be having a lunch, and then we have a massive climb. Those two days are like the toughest days on the entire trip, so we're gonna be climbing and climbing, and we're gonna end up about 400 meters above where we are right now. Let's go. So as I mentioned yesterday, we did that acclimatization hike. We went to a viewpoint trying to get some, the first views of uh, Everest. It didn't happen, it was completely overcast. It's all right. Today we got clear skies. It's a cool 14 degrees Celsius or about, what is it, like 60 Fahrenheit. As you can see, I'm only wearing my long sleeve shirt. And uh, look at all the yaks here in front of me. I've been seeing it more and more, the higher and higher I go in elevation. They're the ones taking all the luggage, and supplies, all the way up to the higher camps. Believe it or not, on our way to the tallest mountain in the world, we do get to walk on some flat surfaces, something that I missed on the Annapurna Base Camp Trek. That one, it was always either going up or coming down, sharp climbs, steep declines, Napoli flat as they called it over there. And as you can see here, the path is very much flat and smooth. Very nice, loving it so far. And it is from up here, from this uh, great viewpoint, that we get our first views of uh, Everest uh, Summit, partially obscure out there in the distance, and what a great sight it is. We were welcomed here by Daphne, the Nepal's national bird. Very colorful. What a way to start the day, right? It's been flat all morning, which is great. Let's start the descent all the way down to the river, where we're going to be having lunch before today's climb. Very dusty path, 
especially with all the traffic jam that we're encountering, I guess all the people <laughs> that stayed yesterday in town, maybe the ones that uh, missed the flight decided to skip the acclimatization day, and we have tons and tons of people just walking uh, the trail. Getting the views of uh, I'm a Dublin or mother and son, nice peak it looks like a pyramid all the way up there 6856 meters of elevation <laughs> let's continue First little uh, village to get some supplies, to make a quick stop if you want to get something to drink. Not far from there, I come across this cave, which is full of trash and toilet paper. What a shame. It's a good one. So this could be another quick stop for you if you need to make a stop. It's nice walking on the flat areas, of course, and sometimes you got some steep climbs through some uh, rocky steps, but nothing beats the forest. Here we got some black and white pine forest on our way down to the river, passing through a few villages where you can stop and resupply, of course, but I'm gonna have lunch, of course, in the last one before that major climb, which I got a sneak peek from one of those viewpoints, and it's gonna be a good one, zigzagging all the way up to the top. After that uh, steep descent through the forest, seeing all the other climbers on the way up, we made it to the last small village before the climb. I'm here about to have a lunch, which I decided to have some soup because if there's something that I've learned is that you do not have a heavy meal right before a steep climb because nature is gonna call and at the wrong moment. Right now I'm here sitting, overlooking the bridge. There's the river, there's the hikers passing by. Let's just enjoy this little moment, this little uh, calm before the storm. I decided to also have some uh, Fanta juice. Why? Because from now on, I don't know if I'm gonna have a toilet in the room and I always have to have like a pee bottle, but here all the, you know, the, the what's it called? The openings here are very narrow. So this is the widest one that I could find, at least for my size. too much food. I thought I had ordered some uh, noodle soup, but this, you know, 
this is more like a full plate. I only had about half. And now I'm just gonna sit here, digest the food. It's only 11 in the morning, so maybe spend about half an hour just relaxing before today's uh, climb. It's gonna be a good one. Of course it is. First suspension bridge of the day. And as you can tell, you have a little swing up and down, but nothing side to side. You're not gonna fall unless the bridge collapses, of course. So just enjoy it. Go as fast as you want or as slow as you want and just keep a steady pace. Don't look down and you'll be on the other side in no time. All right, all right, enough horsing around. I shouldn't have run across the bridge because I was out of breath by the time I made it to the other end. We're at the halfway point of the day. We still got like 2.25 kilometers to go. We got to gain almost 600 meters. Yep, let's do it. We started climbing all right, and it's through a very rocky path, going zigzagging all the way up. Whew. Just take your time, you know, as, I, as they say in uh, Kilimanjaro, pole pole, slowly, slowly. Here they say zoom, zoom, which means go, go, but I think that's a lower elevation. Okay, break is over.
Hold on, mate. Well, one foot in front of the other, don't take breaks. I mean, the breaks that I take is when I stop to get a picture, but other than that, it's just constantly all the way up to the top. It is 1.30, made it up here. We got the monastery behind us. Nice. It is starting to get cold. Whew. Nice climb, man, nice. So I'm at the lodge already. This is my room with an amazing view. I have to say, there's a hot shower in here. I mean, I have my own bathroom, but the shower is not far away. The guy showed me how to use it. The gas was off, so they have to go figure it out and turn it on. So I'm gonna do that right now before it starts to get really cold up here and then it doesn't make sense to take a shower. After that, I don't know if I should do like a little bit of laundry, just like my underwear and my socks. That's what I've been doing every day. Here in my room, I have an outlet, which is luxury, I have to say, on the Annapurna base camp track, everywhere that we charge you to charge your electronics. I mean, here, it's kind of like one of those budget airlines where they charge you for everything. So if you want a shower, you pay for that. You want electricity, you pay for that. If you want Wi-Fi, that's extra, of course. What else, what else? There's no toilet paper anywhere. There's no toilet paper in any other toilets or bathrooms here but you can buy your rolls along the way. One thing that I do to supplement it is that I have one of those uh, baby powders. So every time I use the toilet, I add some of that to my underwear and there's no problem with friction or uh, shafting or anything like that. By the way, I should check. I don't know if, uh, if the new versions have it, but I'm gonna show you right now. I could go here to like the stress. And if you see here, you see? So as you can see here, it measures my heart rate and also my oxygen level in my blood, which is great to know when you're up here, to know if you're acclimatizing or not. Let's see what I have. Uh, heart rate, usually when I'm at sea level in Miami, I have it around 70, but right now I spend about an hour or so climbing. So it's at 110. <laughs> I need to relax, maybe after I take the shower. But the good sign is that my blood level is 92%. Not bad. Man, it's cold. After settling in, I decided to visit the temple or temple jet, but unfortunately, we're not allowed to film inside. There was a prayer going on inside. I was there for a little bit, but then the smoke, I, I just couldn't breathe inside, so I had to step outside. So you can see, clouds are rolling in, overcast. There's no way I'm gonna be able to uh, dry my clothes, but it's okay. I have enough clothes for about six days. And uh, if I use them twice, like if I use my underwear inside out and my socks inside out, then that means I have 12 days. And I'm gonna be hand washing them as much as I can along the way. And uh, I mean, this trip is completely luxury compared to what I've done before where I actually had to camp and no showers and nothing like that. So having a shower, having, a, what is it? A electricity and Wi-Fi, that's just uh, more than I can ask for. Very nice temple, man. I wish I could show it to you, but only from the outside.
it is so nice and warm and cozy in this area that we all decided to put our clothes around the fireplace just to get them dry. I just had a dinner. I went for the shepherd's too. The food here is so delicious that I can't complain so far on the trip. So before I close the day, I want to thank, of course, the trail angel of the day, which is Joaquin. Joaquin, thank you so much for your donation. And if you guys want to be like Joaquin, I'll be leaving the link for my PayPal account. All your donations help fund all the future pilgrimage and expeditions, kind of like this one. So I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow on another day on the Everest Base Camp Trek. See you at 7.30.